What's up, everyone? It's Nikki Wildflower, your unconventional guide to all things beauty business. And today we are going to be talking about 12 things that keep hairstylists broke. If you really want to maximize your income and be a rich hairstylist, which yes, it is possible. These are the things that I see every day in my consulting firm that prevent this from happening for hairstylists. And once we're able to blaze past those, you are well on your way. Number one, I hear this all the time. I will start after this event. I will become an independent stylist after this event. I will get this extensions training and certification after this happens in my life. And guess what happens? You never actually start. You're procrastinating. You're putting stuff off because you're scared. And honestly, it's okay to be scared, but if you don't actually work through that fear and just steam full force ahead through it, you will never make it in this world. So procrastination is one of the biggest things that I see in this industry and in every industry actually. And if you want to be successful and to be a rich stylist, it's something that you have to work through. It's something that you have to do scared, do messy, do when you're not ready. You can't wait until all of your ducks are in a row to take action on something. You have to do it now. There's no other time than now. The number two thing that I see all the time is people taking a million classes. I'm going to do this hair color class, this extension class, this business class, this marketing class. They absorb all of this information. They're reading books on manifestation. They're reading books on business, but they're not actually utilizing what they're learning and taking action on it. I see it all the time with all of these online courses, which is why like in my firm, we switched to a consulting model so that we could have that accountability because honestly, what ends up happening is people just absorb all the knowledge and then their fear still prevents them from actually taking what they're learning and utilizing it. So I see that all the time. Knowledge is not actually power. It's action that is going to get you there. It's what you do with what you're learning. That makes the difference in your life. Number three, hang around in the break room with the complainers, hang around broke people. It is so true and it's the corniest saying of all time, but you do become the sum of the five people that you hang out with most. So if you spend all your time in the break room when you don't have clients and not working on your business, like bringing new people in and optimizing what you're doing and learning and taking action you're never going to get there because you are only going to hold yourself to the standard of those people. So it is so important. And I can't stress this enough. I am continually signing myself into masterminds where I am around like-minded people that are actually doing more than me. If I just hang out with people that complain about the economy, and I'm not saying don't be friends with people who are complainers, but I'm saying be very cautious about where you're spending the vast majority of your time because their mindset is going to leak into to yours. And the break room, you know, you've heard it said before, it's the broke room. Let's be real about it. Number four, I can't even stress this enough. It doesn't even seem like it's related, but having an unsupportive spouse or partner will really just stop you in your tracks when it comes to being successful. And I would know because I've been there and I strongly believe that if I wasn't in a relationship that just allowed me freedom to be who I am and to explore different possibilities, that I wouldn't be where I am today. And I know that because I have been in so many long-term relationships. And it's not that the partners were necessarily bad. It's just that they kind of instilled a lot of their limiting beliefs onto me and I wasn't really able to take action. And that actually really messes with your head. And I just can't stress it enough. If you are not in a healthy relationship, it's really, really hard to be successful in any other capacity of your life, in your friendships, in your family circle, in your career. It's all consuming. So be really, really conscious of the person that you choose to be with, if you choose to be with anybody. But if you do, be so cautious about who that is and make sure that it is somebody who either shares the ambitions that you share or just allows you absolute freedom. Here's another thing that I see all the time. Number five, as soon as things get hard, you quit. Okay, I've been posting on social media for five days in a row. I still only have 400 followers. I haven't gotten any new clients. And then you stop. When in reality, everyone sees my profile and they're like, wow, Nikki, you have 151,000 followers or whatever it is. You just kind of blew up overnight. No, 
No, it was the boring routine of consistency and posting and posting and posting even when it wasn't working. There were crickets and I was still doing it because it's what you do long term. It is the boring repetition that actually gets you where you're going. And successful people, people who are rich hairstylists, they simply outlast other people because they're like, I don't care if it's boring. I'm going to keep doing it anyway. Or they'll have like 10 bad days and screw up 10 people's hair in a row And they're like, you know what? This sucks. This hurts. I'm going to keep going. Listen, anytime you start something new, whether it be posting on social media, a new technique, a new extensions thing, you're changing the structure of your business, you're not going to be good at first at all. You're going to suck and you need to be willing to embrace that because the amount of repetition it takes to be good at something and to get into the swing of it, I can't understate that. Keep going over and over and over again, and you will be successful. That's the difference. Number six, you blame your circumstances. It's the economy. It's the small town that I live in. People just aren't spending money like they used to. It's the salon that I work in. Change it. Yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable. So what? Do it. The economy, yes, I understand that that can be an issue and it is an outside circumstance, but I'm telling you, I have stylists in tiny little towns that are making multiple six-figure incomes. And you know what's different about them? It's only this. It's what's in their head. None of that stuff is going to keep you from being successful, but you have to stop blaming everything on your upbringing. I understand if you've been through hard times in your life. It is just time to really work through that and move past it and take control. What could you be doing differently? Instead of blaming the outside world, realize that there are people with all types of circumstances in all different places that are absolutely thriving right now. And ask yourself, what changes can I make that are gonna propel me forward? Listen, this is pretty self-explanatory. The perfect time isn't coming. You have to do it now. Nothing good is gonna happen by waiting for that perfect moment. There's not gonna be a perfect moment. You can do it when your life is in shambles. You can do it when things are messy. You could do it when you're not feeling that well or you're not feeling that confident. You could do it when you're not feeling motivated. You just have to do it. You're never going to get to a place where it feels like the absolute right time to take action. And I will say that overthinking and perfectionism are absolutely rampant right now. People overthink what they're doing, overthink their hair color placements, overthink what they're posting on social media to the point where they're not doing it. You would be so much better off with the quantity than you would be with one really well thought out, absolutely perfect video. I'm telling you, 15 videos that kind of suck are better than one video that you spent four hours on that probably won't get any attention anyway because you didn't put in any work to build your audience. Caring too much about other people's opinions. This is a huge one that I see, especially with social media, especially with promoting your business. People are like, oh, but everyone that I grew up with is going to see that and they're going to think that I'm cringy. Is cringy the absolute worst thing that you could be? Is annoying the worst thing that you could be? Who cares at the end of the day? Figure out a couple of people in your life whose opinions actually matter to you. Actually matter. And then you have to ask yourself why you care what Jeffrey from high school thinks. Because he doesn't care what you think, trust me. You have to look past that and don't be afraid to be a cringy person. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Do not be afraid to promote your services. It does not matter. At the end of the day, this is your life, not theirs. And you really have to overcome that mindset of caring too much what people think and getting caught up in that trap. This is a big one, not having any policies in place to protect your business. Let's be real about it. A lot of people are afraid to implement cancellation policies, rescheduling policies, refund policies, because they're afraid that they're going to lose clients. And then you have 10 people reschedule in a row and you've not protected your income. I see people's weeks fall apart all the time, and we actually did a study on this. On average, hairstylists lose $24,000 a year due to last-minute cancellations and reschedules. And if you do not protect your business, you're never going to be able to get ahead or actually like secure an income for yourself where it's predictable. So it's really important, especially if you are booked out or have a waiting list, 
one, to have some policies in place to protect your business, and two, to clearly communicate. Because people say, well, won't people get mad if they cancel? Listen, if you are extremely clear with people about what your business policies are in advance and they sign off on it and you communicate it thoroughly, they will not be angry if they have to cancel last minute. I understand you want to give people a free pass, and this is not a lack of empathy. It's just protecting your business. You can be wildly empathetic and still hold boundaries in your business and your life. This is a big one emotionally discounting. You know I talk about this all the time, but it's one of the biggest issues in our industry. Yes, we make connections with our clients and our guests and they feel like they're friends to us. You can't discount them. You have to charge your full prices or you are drastically undercutting yourself. You are never going to get ahead if you keep not charging people because you feel bad or you feel guilty or you're lacking the confidence in your work. Be secure and firm in your prices. Communicate clearly before you even start doing someone's hair. They should know what type of investment they are making into their hair today. And that's going to prevent you from doing that little emotional discount dance at the end where you don't think it's perfect and you're going to shave $50 off of the service. We lose a ton of money by doing this. Another thing that I see really often is people not being willing to invest in their business. You think that you can just make it happen on your own by watching little tidbits on Instagram and watching little tidbits on YouTube. And yes, those are amazing, incredible resources and you will learn stuff, but it is highly unlikely that you'll be able to learn it in the same amount of time than if you actually made an investment in your business and had some kind of mentor who has actually already paved the path for you so you don't have to spend all your time trying to recreate the wheel that's already been created. So I see a ton of people who don't take risks and invest in their business and invest in their education and think that they can do it on their own. And yes, you can, but it's probably going to take you 10 times longer. Every big leap that I have made in my business came after investing in a mentor. Another one is just not knowing how to price your services. It is so important that you are able to sit down and figure out exactly what you should be charging for everything. And I'm not saying to charge hourly because that is not how we do it around here. We are efficiency masters, so it wouldn't make sense for us to penalize ourselves by charging hourly. So that's not what I'm talking about. You need to be able to break it down and say, hey, what am I effectively earning for every hour that I am in the salon, but not to present that as an hourly rate to clients. You need to continue to price yourself in a way that makes sense and then continue to get faster so that you are maximizing your earning potential behind the chair. And if you don't understand the numbers, you're not going to grow. I think a lot of people get to this point in their career where they're like, yeah, I mean, I'm making good money, but they're not actually measuring what they're making or even like making the changes that are going to make them more profitable because we're so, we love what we do so much and we love connecting with people that we stop treating it like a business and treat it more like a hobby. So sitting down and understanding where you're at is the only way to really measure and grow. So I think I might have lost track and given you more than 12, but that's okay. It, it, your birthday came early this year. I just went on a rant and I couldn't stop. So thank you so much for watching. That's it for today. If you enjoyed what you learned today and you found it useful, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.